Welcome back once more. Let's take a look at what's happening in the business world. Let's begin in the mining, in the manufacturing sector. And struggling Athi River mining cement has been placed under administration in a move to give the firm a lifeline to recover from huge debt incurred. Muni Dorti and George Ware of PricewaterhouseCoopers will take over the management of the cement company. The move is in accordance with the Insolvency Act, which allows financially struggling companies to put their house in order. Atheriva Cement becomes the second after Nakuma to be placed under the Insolvency Act. At the same time, the Nairobi Security Exchange has suspended trading of Atheriva mining shares for a seven-day period following the placement of the company under administration. Elsewhere, after being shut down for the last 72 hours, Chase Bank is back in business under a new name, SBM Bank Kenya. The bank last week was temporarily closed as it finalized what it termed as rebranding. Will the new ownership help shrug off the bank's image in the market? It is a sigh of relief after months and weeks of anguish and uncertainty for customers. The completion of the acquisition of Chase Bank has been in the works for some time now. Chase Bank, which will now be under SBM Holdings, has been under receivership from the 7th of April 2006. The misfortunes of the bank included under reporting of insider loans, liquidity problems, and failing to meet statutory banking ratios. We now, KGSC and ourselves as the central bank and other stakeholders, will work focused on recovering the values that remain in Chase Bank in receivership. SBM, a Mauritian bank which is behind the acquisition, has invested 6 billion shillings in a bid to recapitalize the bank. The funds will go towards portfolio purchase, taking the total investment to 8.6 billion shillings. It is the strategy and the vision of my government and my prime minister that this venture succeeds and we're going to stick to it through thick and thin. This moves the bank to a base, bringing a whiff of relief to their depositors and borrowers. Chase Bank customers will have 50% of the funds transferred to SBM Bank. The remaining 50% of the funds will still be locked for at least three years, earning interest. Banking and technology has been touted as a game changer in the future of banking. Tonight we tell you how Kenya's second largest bank is positioning itself to take a of the digital revolution in the sector through its new subsidiary FinServe. KTN's Julio you know, now looks at how this will change the bank's fortunes. In the latest yet critical phase that could tilt Equity Bank's business model is the announcement of the company unveiling a new subsidiary. FinServe, days after it announced a 11 billion shillings profit after tax. Today, we want to set this capability free to be available to anybody and everybody in the world. We want just to be a customer of FinServe like all the other customers. Equity's fintech subsidiary FinServe is set to ease digital financial services, which is a cornerstone in today's banking world. The new outfit will focus on digitization and churn out new innovations to ensure the bank's survival in the new urbanization of traditional banking. Currently, FinServe has packed the Kenyan market through two revolutionary products that offer innovative solutions to businesses and developers. Introduced under the name Django, the institution provides payment gateway and open APIs. At the same time, you know, we see us moving more into digitizing distribution and logistics. The two new developments will support business in processing payments in the East Africa's payment space. Digital payments have not taken off as fast as we want them to. Cash is still king. So our platform aims to do that because it's so fragmented in terms of the digital payment acceptance platforms. Most of these innovations have been rolled out beyond Kenya. Julie Owino, KTN News. And engineers in the country have broken their silence over the ongoing demolitions in the country, calling on safety and decorum to be exercised. Speaking during the, the chairman's dinner, Collins Juma urged for sobriety 
during the demolitions. Juma also calling on engineers to seize opportunities that are emerging from the government's Big Four agenda on manufacturing and housing. I think we need to create our space in this Big Four agenda. We are talking of manufacturing. Manufacturing, I think, basically is done by engineers. We are talking of universal health care. I think health care, we have medical engineers, we have medical equipment, we have hospitals, we have all sorts of things that engineers can participate. We talk of food security. Food security, we have agricultural components. We have innovation in agriculture. We have mechanisation.